Welcome to worship at St. James on this festival day. It is the festival of Pentecost Sunday. Today, because of the relaxation of some of the safety protocols, we can sit a little closer together if you are, uh, have received the two vaccines. And also, I invite you today to sing under your masks. Am I clear enough? Hear now the Pentecost story from Acts, the second chapter. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came the sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them, all were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages. We hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves, both men and women. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs in the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist, and the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. And everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Word of God, Word of Life.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones and your Spirit brings truth to the world. Send us this Spirit. Transform us by your truth and give us language to proclaim your Gospel. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
I call upon the readers to stand. Today, as on the first Pentecost, we hear a cacophony of voices. Romans, the eighth chapter. In Mandarin Chinese. Word of God, Word of Life. Please stand for a reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John. <clears throat> Jesus said, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me, yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, so he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. It 
It is 50 days after Easter, and we have arrived at Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost literally means 50, and because of that, today we celebrate the birthday of the Christian church. Today, we have just heard the good news of God spoken in different languages, in Mandarin, Chinese, and French, and German, and Spanish, and English, and we are reminded that words and language has power. Pentecost Sunday is about the diversity of language and power so that no one is left out. Or, as a liturgical professor at Union Seminary said recently, Pentecost is a time of being uprooted and deeply grounded, both at the same time. And so the question for all of us this morning is, are you sure on Pentecost Sunday you want to be uprooted and deeply grounded? In the gospel lesson I just read, Jesus is saying goodbye to his disciples, and he assures them that they will not be left alone as he is leaving to head to the cross, will not leave them alone in their uprootedness. In fact, God's presence will keep them connected, and that connective tissue is called the Advocate or the Holy Spirit. And that spirit has two functions. Number one, to hear your pain, your desperation, your utterances, and to put them in proper language and bring them to God so that the spirit is kind of a divine translating system. And secondly, when you and I get things wrong, And when we stray from justice, we get stuck in the lazy boy recliners. When we take on a faith that demands nothing of us, then the Spirit comes to give us a swift kick in the pants and gets us moving again. So the Spirit is connective tissue as a translator and as one who gets us on our way. But notice that the Holy Spirit is never our destination, not our primary emphasis. The Spirit is the link between us and the greater divine. That's the reason why Lutherans don't often get labeled as holy rollers or charismatic or why we don't often speak in tongues. The Spirit isn't the destination for us. The Spirit is the vehicle to get us there. Let me illustrate. Today's Gospel reading from John was written about the year 90 or 95 of the Common Era. That is, some 60 years after the death and resurrection of Jesus, which means that its audience were those folks who had never seen Jesus walk on the earth. The Gospel was not written in Aramaic, the language that Jesus spoke. Instead, it was written in Greek, in Biblical Greek, in Koine Greek. And since 90% of the population at that time was illiterate, John's Gospel was spoken, was read out loud in the assembly, just as we have done today in worship. Have you ever wondered what that Greek language sounded like some 1900 years ago. How the first Christians heard the word. What were the words? What were the sounds? What was the jargon? I have taken three years of Greek and remember almost nothing of it, I must say, at this point. But I have a niece who has just married a Lutheran scholar who speaks six languages. And about five of those languages are dead languages. His name is Andrew, and I asked him to speak the words to us. So hear now the Greek words that were heard some 1900 years ago. Lily? Pensou comigo, parado atrás, 
ta lumma tesade veias hakkaratu kattase kodurtai, e keinas marturese peri emu. Kai humeste marturei hadeva kesme emu este. Ano tatta de dare tu mi, kina hakkan delte e ora, el ton de monuete, a ton hati ego e pan tu mi. Tauta de tu mi, esta kes uke pan. Hati me tu mon e me. Nun de tu pago tos tan pensan tame. Kai tu des ex humon e lo tame. Tu u pages. Al hati tauta de dare tu mi, e lupe te perte, perlo che in tu mon, te in cadino. Al ego te in adete, in adego tu mi, su te e tu mi, in a ego a elto. E in andar mai a che a elto, a parapre tos u che luce tai tos tu mas. E in andar in parlusto, penso a tan tos tu mas. Kai elton e tenas e lens e tan tos mon peri anatias kai peri tikarasi tunens kai peri tiseos. Peri e anatias ne, hapi u testiusen eske ne. Peri tikarasunes te, hapi tos tan pera du pago kai geti e reit ne. Peri e tiseos, hapi ha a ton du kasmu tutu kekita. E ti colà ergo comì lei, al ultimo stella stade a ti. Thank you, Lily. Thank you, Andrew. You have just heard the same Greek words that were spoken to the first Christians. But notice that Jesus didn't speak Greek. Jesus didn't know Greek. Instead, he... Greek was used as a vehicle of translation, the connector that linked Jesus' news with a later audience. That is the work of the Spirit. John's audience was originally, well, they were originally from Jerusalem, and they were most likely run out of town by the Romans, and they had to relocate up the coast in Ephesus in modern-day Turkey. They were uprooted from their home. They were living in a borrowed land, in a borrowed culture. They had deep feelings of abandonment and disconnection. They wondered where God was. Was God simply out to lunch? And so John tells the gospel story to his community. And he says, this Jesus will send an advocate, a spirit of truth, the connector. And the Greek language was used as the tool. Language is the connector. Now think of your life for a moment. Are there times in your life when you feel like God is absent or remote or detached? Has this past pandemic year narrowed your interactions with others? Upset your routine and displaced your familiar way of life? Do you long to be reconnected to people? If so, that's the work of the Spirit, deeply grounding. Or, have you been watching or reading the news about missiles flying between the Palestinians and the Israelis back and forth in a land that oddly we call holy? And now a fragile ceasefire has taken place. And are we tired of hearing and reading about the violence? And we just, we just want to turn it all off. And when we walk down the street, do we avert our eyes from those who live on the sidewalks of our street? Or, or are we frustrated with hearing about the war in Ethiopia or the struggle for racial justice at the death of Andrew Brown in Elizabeth City, North Carolina? And while we tend to turn our heads away, the Spirit pushes us toward justice. The Spirit reconnects us at the crossroads of life, even when we don't want to be reconnected. Uprootedness. 
The Holy Spirit acts in between, uprooting and grounding us at the same time. Spencer Silver died in his home in St. Paul, Minnesota this past week. He was 80 years old. You may not recognize the name, I certainly didn't, but you most likely use the invention that he came up with. Mr. Spencer got a job after college at 3M, where Bill Hammond of our congregation worked for many, many years. Mr. Spencer developed adhesives for air aircraft construction, or at least he tried to. He failed at that task. But while experimenting, he came up with a solution to a problem that didn't exist. An adhesive that stuck to the surfaces but could easily be peeled off and reused. Nobody cared. 3M told him to ignore it and to come up with something that was usable that they could actually sell and make some money off of. But he was sure it could be used. Meanwhile, someone by the name of Art Fry heard of this sticky material and wondered what would happen. Because he was practicing in his church choir in St. Paul, Minnesota one evening, and as you can imagine, and as every choir member knows, suddenly the small pieces of paper that marked the parts in his hymnal kept falling out all over the place. And so he asked for a sample of Dr. Silver's adhesive so that he could create a bookmark that would stay in place and yet didn't tear the page when he took it off. It was a hit. And 3M began to manufacture it. And Dr. Silver called it acrylate copolymer microspheres. And a young marketer in the marketing department said, we can do better than that, and renamed it Post-it Notes. It's been a cash cow for 3M. And today there are over 3,000 different kinds of Post-it Notes. We use them all the time. Now think for a moment. Post-it Notes are not the person using them nor are they the written page that we need to have marked. Post-it notes are the in-between. They link the human with the desired page. They are the tool that helps us concentrate on what's important, what's central, what's just, and what's right. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. How did Luther say it? I believe that I cannot by my own understanding or effort believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to Him, but the Holy Spirit has called us through the Gospel, enlightened me with His gifts, sanctified and kept me in true faith. The Spirit brings us together. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. On that first Pentecost when the Spirit swept through the upper room like the, like the sound of a violent wind, God's good news of love was translated into the languages of all so that no one was left out. That was the day the Christian church was born and continues to be born in all of us. You might want to make a note of that. Through Christ our Lord, amen.
Let us today proclaim our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, to God to God, be God not from me, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And this kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one the one holy God, the apostolic church. We acknowledge one the baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Gracious God, you give the Holy Spirit to your church, filling it with many and varied gifts. In the church throughout the world, strengthen us in our visioning and our dreaming that it may discover anew the Spirit's creative work, Lord, in your mercy. Jen Shan Chuan Bien Dadi Shandia Ching Ting Woman Chua Lord in your mercy. God of the nations, at the sound of the rushing wind, people speaking different languages proclaimed and heard together your deeds of power. Fill the leaders of nations with your Holy Spirit so that they may exercise your gracious will in the lives of all people. Lord, in your mercy. God of faithfulness, you tend to the needs of your people, even the size of our hearts. Hear those who cry out in distress this day. Restore to wholeness all who are in any need, especially we pray for Stacy, Dennis, Heidi, Tanya, Vicki, Bill, Joyce, and Elizabeth. Lord, in your mercy. I de Shandi, Gansha Ning Tong Woman, Jerli, Shodao de Liu, St. James Lutheran. Gansha Woman de Bu Wei, Yi Jer Woman de Fen Chi, Bing Shan Woman Kai Fan. Manzu woman Linju de Shu Yao. Shandia Ching Ting woman Chua. Lord, in your mercy. God of hope, those who have died in you raise their eternal song of praise. We give you thanks for the many gifts of your people and rejoice in the witness of all your saints. And especially this day, we would ask your comfort and your care upon Joel Manning at the death of his uncle Mike. Lord, in your mercy. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us nod to one another from a distance. Thank you.
Please be seated. I hope some of you noticed the Pentecost banner that flows from our tower outside. It was put up yesterday. Our thanks to all those who climbed up to the top to make that happen. I also want us to thank our readers today, Lee and Ben and Scott and Trey and Joseph. Thank you for sharing your gifts and your skills with us today. Your uh, new membership directory is available. If you didn't, didn't grab one last week, uh, I encourage you to take one. They're in the basket right by the door. Next Sunday, we say thank you to our interim director of music, Michael Lindner. Charlotte is preparing a Bring Your Own Brunch. <sighs> <laughs> and we're going to be invited to gather after church in the courtyard outside. You can bring uh, some food items and uh, drinks will be provided for you. And in that way, we can say thank you properly to Michael and hopefully also Joel will be with us. It is so good to have so many of you back on this Pentecost Sunday. I see Shirley Rogan, who has been so faithful to her husband, Dennis, Sylvia is back, and uh, so many others. Welcome to all of you. Julie McSwain of our congregation is here. Julie retires tomorrow. Congratulations to her. Julie, stand so we can embarrass you. Yeah. Congratulations on your retirement. And speaking of uh, Minnesota that was in the sermon, Julie is going to take off in about a month and head back to her uh, homeland back in Minnesota uh, where she has another job waiting for her. So please accept our thanks and congratulations on that. And it's been a privilege to have you as part of this congregation. I invite you now to take the elements that you have in hand and peel off the top that reveals the host. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, you pour out the fire of your Spirit, uniting in one body people of every nation and tongue. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Remembering our Lord's death and resurrection, we pray over this bread and cup, giving you thanks that you have made us worthy to stand before you and to serve you as your priestly people. Send your Spirit upon these gifts of your church. Gather into one all who share this meal. Fill us with your Holy Spirit to establish our faith in truth, that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus the Christ through whom all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your church, both now and forever. Amen. Please lift the bread. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night of His betrayal, took bread. 
He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. The body of Christ given for you. Please lift the cup. In the same manner also he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in my remembrance. The blood of Christ shed for you. Lord, remember us now in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Give us our sins, and give us Let us reflect on this mystery of our faith.
Please stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace now and to eternal life. Amen. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Receive the blessing. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord. And do so in nomine Patri et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Shared good news.